welcome to today's webinar. My name is Stephen Schnall, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Uh, and we've got a very interesting topic, uh, the impact of artificial intelligence in the print world. These are exciting times. Self-driving cars, tracking air pollution, Google searches, robots, Automation and predictive analytics are just a few of the capabilities that are transforming our lives by applying artificial intelligence. The challenge is, does AI have any relevance to our graphic communications businesses? It's a very interesting question. Artificial intelligence has been a big buzz concept over the past few years. The interesting fact is that AI has been around for many years. Alan Turing, a British polymath mathematician, if you could figure out that one, started the, <laughs> to explore AI in the early 1950s. But we got a lot to say here today, but we can't go much further without introducing our two stars that are going to be talking about AI in the printing field today. One is David Rosenthal. Uh, David is the president and co-founder of MindFire, a two-time Inc. 500 award-winning software company. Uh, and he offers services to commercial printers, agencies, and brands like BMW, Microsoft, Harvard, Facebook, and 15,000 plus other companies that grow their leads and sales with MindFire's unique marketing platform that finds and engages clients using direct mail, email, and social media. We also have with us today Udi Ariely. In 1973, Udi began the third generation of his family business, a printing company. Udi, over the past several years, has focused on creating a unique theory of global optimization and building on intelligent software products and educational products around that theory. He was one of the main founders of the Print Cafe software company, which was bought by EFI. Udi is currently the EFI Senior Director of Printflow Scheduling and TGO. Udi continues his mission to advance artificial intelligence, automation, and TGO to drive the print industry into the digital world. Automation, smart factories, and greater profitability. Wow, that should be interesting. But <laughs> let's get going on a very simple thing here, okay? The big question. The big question I find is, how do we define artificial intelligence? What is this artificial intelligence? We hear about it. It's a buzzword, as I said before. But I think I have some help on this. And I'm going to reach out. Yep, you got it. These are the guys that I'm going to reach out to to find out what the definition is of artificial intelligence. Do you think they may know an answer? They certainly help. George Lucas and Star Wars become successful. So let's see if we can find a reasonable thought process in how we define AI. I did a lot of research on this, and I came up with a lot of different thoughts on how you define AI. And a lot of it was so over the top, you can't believe it. But I came to a conclusion. And it's a very simple definition. The capacity of a computer to perform natural intelligence and operations analogous to learning and decision-making in humans. That's it. What are we talking about? We're talking about having many of the functions that we as humans do and automating this process. So I think it's a very interesting opportunity. But let's look at this. So if the, if the robots and the computers have the capacity to perform certain things in our minds and things like that. How do we actually handle these things? What do we do? There's a very interesting uh, thing I found. I found this gentleman, Sam Kwok, a senior partner at Garage Technology Ventures. And he makes a bold statement. Artificial intelligence has the power to change lives companies, and the world. He concludes that executives, entrepreneurs, governments, and investors who take informed risk on AI technologies will be rewarded. Well, let's look at this. Here we have a list of bullet points that I think actually can 
impact AI into the printing field. And we're going to hear about two of these in this uh, webinar. One is how the sales opportunities prevail, and the other is the process that we use in automating our internal operations. So we're going to hear two aspects of this today. We can't cover all of these bullet points, but I think you'll find that AI really does have a, an enormous opportunity for all of us. So these AI opportunities are all around us, and we've got to look at this because they're there. How do we utilize them and what do we do? Because they are disruptive. There's no question about it. If we can automate our businesses, make our processes smarter, we can do intelligent sales and marketing aspects, what do we do? We have the opportunity to increase profitability, and oh yeah, how many robots can we put into our mix? It's a very interesting model, and it's something that I think we have a great opportunity to think about today. And that's what we're going to be spending our time on. So we've got two great companies that are making a difference in the world. And as I mentioned to you before, David and Udi will be talking to you in an amazing way, talking to you about ideas and opportunities that are there. However, there's something that always bothers me when I present different things that are very change-oriented. Change is one of the greatest challenges that we have in our business experience. And if we maintain the traditional lifestyle and business style that we've had and the model that we've built over the years, what are we doing ourselves? So here's this gentleman who you may have heard about, Socrates, an ancient Greek man, who 2,500 years ago had a very wise statement. The secret of change is to focus all your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. David, can you show us a way how we can implement Socrates' basic philosophies? <laughs> it's all yours, David. I definitely can. All right. Well, thank you, Stephen. And uh, good morning or early afternoon or good day to everyone, depending on where you are dialed in from. It's an honor to be here. And as Stephen just mentioned, I am the co-founder and president here at MindFire. And the lens through which I'm going to be sharing thoughts with you today on how AI is impacting print is, as Stephen stated, from the marketing and sales angle. Okay, And I'm going to share five key applications, little known applications of AI, uses for AI, that you can apply right now, or at least pieces or parts of them to your business. And so where we spend, where I spend most of my focus and most of my energy as an organization and as a business leader is in this, in this uh, problem of trying to help companies connect themselves better to their prospects and their customers so that they can generate more leads and more sales. That's ultimately the objective. So it's through that lens that I see this landscape. It's, it's through that lens that I'm bringing you these five key applications, which I think contrasts well with what Yudi is going to be talking about here in a moment because he brings a, a, a different angle of the conversation. But my angle is how does it impact us? How does AI impact us from a marketing and a sales perspective? Now, to give you context for what I'm going to share with you and to understand how you can think about AI impacting your organization from a lead, sale, revenue perspective, what you see on the screen is a typical marketing and sales workflow, the kind that, that MindFire employs for its, its clients, and, and probably similar to what you do. Ultimately, for the most part, the objective is what you see there with the red arrow, right? You want to drive sales, or you're trying to drive sales for your customer. And so we focus on helping companies, helping printers grow leads and sales for themselves and their clients. Ultimately, everything we do is trying to help folks drive sales. Now, the problem is, that in today's modern world, and you would probably agree with this, it's increasingly difficult for companies like yours, companies like mine, like ours, to reach and engage people in a way that gets them to take the next step with us. Would you agree with that? So that's where we come in, and that's where AI can really help elevate your game. And, and from our vantage point here at MindFire, we're incorporating AI not only in software, but also in services um, that we provide, and it's from that experience that I'm bringing you um, these five key applications. I want to give you context for where that's coming from, 
uh, because we believe these are going to help shape your thinking and give you some potential strategic shifts in how you do your marketing and your sales. Okay? And so when I say AI, with that foundation in place, before I, I show you these five key applications, one of the questions that people often ask me is, okay, so Dave, is AI going to replace me? Okay, is it going to replace me with a robot? And my response to that is, men and women, in the marketing context or in the sales context, my answer is probably not, not exactly, not entirely, at least not yet, but eventually. I believe that it has the power to make you smarter and consequently happier, lead a more fulfilled life. So I think of AI as it pertains to our work as marketing and sales professionals, like having a machine or a computer assisting us in knowing where to focus our time, where to focus our energy to make the most of what we have. So using a machine to help us see patterns we wouldn't otherwise see and to do work for us that is otherwise mundane or that we wouldn't have bandwidth for or that, frankly, we just wouldn't know how to do. It, you may or may not know that artificial intelligence and machine learning is already creating ads. Um, it's creating content. It's, it's writing uh, content and articles, things that you're seeing on the web. Some of that's being written by a computer through AI. So what we believe is going to happen is that some of the grunt work, if you will, or some of the work that's extremely difficult right now in sales and marketing is going to be augmented and eventually, in some cases, replaced by AI. But is it going to replace you as a human? Not yet. Not now. At least that's my opinion. So, by the way, Stephen talked to you. You mentioned this, the secret to change, right, from Socrates. And in line with that, what I would like to say is that if you don't change, and AI is certainly a change that will happen or is already happening in your business, if you don't adapt to the change and you're not okay with change, well, by golly, you're going to hate irrelevance even more. Okay. So if you're not, if you're not okay with change, the opposite of that is what I would argue is for some of us is irrelevance. Okay. The, that's the likely alternative if we don't pay attention to these very, very important trends. So when I say that AI is going to help you stay relevant and it's going to help you see patterns and do work for us, when I say it's going to help you reduce complexity in this increasingly complex world, here's what I mean. This, for example, that you see here on the screen is just a recent snapshot of some of the activity that, that our customers see as they engage their customers and prospects using MindFire. So it's across email, it's across the web, it's across print and direct mail, all of these different cha channels. But the challenge is this data is great, right? But how do we harness that to turn it into to sales? How do we achieve the business outcomes that are actually important to us? And that's where AI can help. So let me share with you these five key applications. I think you should get a piece of paper and be ready to jot these down uh, because they're going to spark some new ideas and insights for you. If you're taking notes, just to jot down the, the idea number and the little description that I'm going to give you here in a second. In the, in the Q&A, we're going to go a little bit further if you have questions. All right? So this is idea number one. Write this down. Number one, the idea here is intent data, okay? So let me give you an example of how this works and how it helps us make sense of mountains of data, how it does things that humans cannot possibly do without a machine and AI. So this is idea number one. Now, intent data is just a fancy term for uh, the following. Let me, let me kind of paint a picture for you. Imagine if you, if you could pull the log files, the activity records, from all of the websites in the world. Like if you could get a list of all of the pages and the IP addresses that, that are hitting those pages. And then imagine for a moment that you had a way of making a profile or a, a record for a person that you're seeing in that data, not just in one website, but maybe across tens or hundreds or thousands of websites. And then if you could also take that and not only make a profile for that person, but look at what they're reading. You know, maybe they're reading news. It could be a white paper. It could be a PDF. Maybe they're on a webinar like the one we're on today. It could be watching a video. Imagine if you could discern all of that. So you could see, okay, this person across multiple websites is looking at information about, I don't know, let's say for this audience, let's say it's maybe they're looking to understand how direct mail can be more personalized and relevant. And, oh, it looks like they might be in the mortgage industry. So imagine you could take that information and that profile and then find the company that that person works for. 
And then what if you could find who that individual is in that organization? So what you can see now is that there is a person with a name in an organization that appears to be consuming content of a certain type. And what if you could actually see that their interest is spiking, that maybe they're increasingly hungry for that kind of information. And if they are, you know, geez, why don't we pick up the phone and give them a call? Why don't we leave them a very targeted voicemail if they don't answer the phone or send them an email that's exactly addressing the situation that they're in? Well, that is intent data, okay? In other words, it's kind of looking over the shoulder of your target market, watching what they're doing. Except in reality, it's the AI that's piecing all of this together and then bubbling it to the surface for you. Do you get that? I want to make sure everybody's paying attention and awake. Go over to the little Q&A box and drop, a, drop the word yes if you just had an aha moment and understood what I'm talking about there. And I want to know, is this something that you can see the potential in for your company and how it might change the future of your sales and marketing? So go over to the chat box. Just show me the awake. I want to make sure everybody's paying attention. The second key idea here is going to build on the first, okay? This is key application number two. Write this down, personality AI, okay? So imagine that you're following up with someone you find using intent data. That was idea number one that I just showed you. Or maybe you met somebody at a trade show. It doesn't really matter. But imagine if you could understand how that person likes to receive information. What I mean by that is the words, the phrases, the punctuation, the style, the way they like to receive information to elicit the response that you want. And what if you could use that to, let's say, write the perfect email or leave the perfect voicemail or have that perfect first meeting over coffee? That's where personality AI comes into play. That's, that's where key application number two comes into play. Personality AI allows you to do that. And the example I have on the screen here is something called Crystal. It's a technology that's incredibly powerful. It's like having a, um, a superpower, if you will, that gives you the ability to read your target, the person you're emailing, as, as you see here in the example on the screen, and it uses AI to analyze them. It's a little plug-in that goes in your email that immediately provides and surfaces these insights to you like you see here on the screen. And then the machine, the AI, tells you the best way to communicate. Kid you not, folks, this is incredible. It helps me not only communicate with clients, it could help you do the same for communicating with prospects, uh, maybe even your staff or your boss. I mean, the, poss the possibilities are endless. So this is something that is immediately available to us as sales and marketing people to improve the way we communicate with other people using AI. So go over to the chat again. I want to make sure everybody got this one. Drop me a yes. If you think personality AI could help you, it could be with your boss, it could be with your clients. And, you know, for some of us, it might even be with our spouse, right? We always need help communicating with the ones we love. So that's idea number two. Those are two things that AI can help us do right now as marketing and salespeople to find the right kinds of people to engage with and to do it in a one-on-one -on -one fashion that actually resonates with them. So I want to move now to key application number three. Write this down. Number three, lookalike AI. Okay, write that down. Now, what I want to show you here is how you can t tap into this power of AI through Facebook. Now, it works in other platforms too. So Facebook's just one example. Um, but here's how it works. All right. Firstly, when I talk about lookalike AI, most people don't know that you can take a list of people that could be your customers, that could be your prospects, and you can upload them to Facebook, okay? When you upload them to Facebook, Facebook gives you the ability to now target those people on Facebook. That, that part of the process is free. The second thing people often don't know is that once you've uploaded that information, once you've uploaded a list of people, prospects, or clients, you can tap into Facebook's lookalike AI to create an audience of people who are similar the data show us, now Facebook hasn't officially released this, but, but the data that, that, that people have on this process shows us that Facebook has somewhere around 50,000 data attributes about everyone in their system, 50,000. And so using AI and machine learning, they're finding people who are likely to be very similar to your audience, okay? And you could say, you know, well, I want to upload a list of my best clients or maybe those with the highest lifetime value, whatever the case may be, and then tell Facebook, you know what? Go find me more people like this. 
Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, look, Facebook is for kids or Facebook's for, you know, pictures of cats and dogs and, and food and stuff like that, or that, you know, B2B people aren't on Facebook. And I'm, I, I got to tell you, folks, that's a myth. Some of our best customers, some of our best leads, and the same is true for our clients, are people who come from Facebook. They're the 35 to 60-year-old uh, demographic, and they are B2B. So Facebook isn't just about pictures of babies and stuff. It's where real business happens. So this might be another area where you need to think about change, where you need to apply Socrates' thinking to your, to your life. Because if you don't embrace the power of social and the incredible capability that the machine learning and AI that they provide you, in many cases for free, to engage B2B buyers, B2C buyers, well, you're going to hate the irrelevance when your market, when your customers start engaging with other competitors because you're not actively engaged in those platforms, okay? So there's one more application that relates to social, to Facebook specifically, which is key application number four. So if you look at the screen, um, this one builds on what we just saw a moment ago. All right, so write this down. This is number four, outcome-driven machine learning. It's a bit of a long phrase there, but outcome-driven machine learning. Here's how this works. Once you have that audience that I just showed you a second ago on Facebook, whether it's a matched list of your customers, or a look-alike audience that looks like your best customers, you can use outcome-driven machine learning to engage these people to achieve what you want. Now, let me, let me put that in English. Let me break that down for you. You can kind of think of this uh, as the, um, you know, the drive-through experience or the fast food experience where you walk in or you go through the drive-through and you pick a number one or a number three meal Basically, you tell them what you want, right? You want to walk out with a burger and fries? Well, you tell them, I want a number one meal. You want a salad with iced tea? You tell them, I want a number three with iced tea. Whatever you want, you order, and you leave with that. Well, that's what outcome-driven machine learning is. You tell the system, in this case, you're telling Facebook what outcome you want. It could be, hey, I want to build brand awareness. Or maybe you want traffic to a, to a landing page. Maybe you want to create more leads for a webinar like the one we're on today. So when you tell Facebook, this is what I want, they'll take that list, whether it's the audience that you uploaded or the lookalike audience that looks like those folks, and basically think of it as they're prioritizing that audience using what you know about them plus the other tens of thousands of data points that they have to find the people, the right people, who are most likely to do what you want and engage them in a way that gets the result that you want at the cost that you want. Does that make sense? So that's what outcome-driven machine learning is, totally available to all of you through Facebook and other platforms. Now, I want you to go over to the chat box. I want you to tell me, did you know that you could do this with Facebook? Did you know that you could use their machine learning and, and the lookalike capability that they have, the Facebook AI, to help you drive the outcomes that you want using Facebook? Just tell me yes or no. Or, you know, some of you, your mind might be blown. I want to know that too. <laughs> Keep it coming, guys. Okay. So now your, your mind might be spinning with all of, all of these possibilities. And before I hand it back to my counterparts, I want to talk about one more kind of AI that you can leverage. This is number five. Write it down. This is called uh, predictive an analysis or predictive analytics. Okay, you probably heard this before. Uh, the, the, the word is thrown around a lot. It can be expensive, and, and it does require a special skill set. At least it has up until recently. Because now there are self-service systems. The one I'm showing you here on the screen is one called BigML. You can write that down, Big, B-I-G-M-L, so bigmachinelearning.com. And what this does is it allows you to take your data, let's say uh, a spreadsheet, okay, and upload it to the system. All you need to do is have a column that designates your objective, and you can then create a model that will predict how likely new sets of data are to achieve that objective. So let me give you an example. We at MindFire often run web classes, kind of like webinars that, that we're in today, right? Where we, we teach some information, and at the end of that webinar, we want a certain percentage of those folks to take the next step with us, which is to become a customer, right? You probably do similar things. So our goal is to teach, but then also to ascend them into being a customer. So we run a few of those web classes. We code the data to then include a column that describes whether or not they took us up on the offer to work with us. It could be a yes or a no, just one column with a yes or a no, and you feed that into Big ML, okay? And then what happens is really nothing short of magic the first time you experience it. What it will do is it will find patterns in your data 
that you can use to improve your marketing and sales funnel. Like in our case, it says, you know, you should target this type of person with this type of title, maybe three days before the event, if you want them at the end of that webinar to have a high chance of taking the next step. So with those kinds of insights, men and women, you can see how then we as an organization and how you as business leaders, as, as sales and marketing professionals can focus your attention and your time on the most valuable set of activities that's going to lead to the results that you want. And so that's what predictive analytics, that's what predictive analysis can do for you. And again, big ML, not a MindFire product. You can go sign up, give it a shot. There's a free level of service. takes uh, just a few moments to get up and running. I'm not going to say it's necessarily easy, but folks, it's not rocket science either. It's in your hands. This is something you can do uh, right now. All right. So that was idea number five. And obviously, I'm going to bring this to land here now for us, that as uh, commercial printers, as marketing organizations, as, uh, as we think about what we can do with AI, the vantage, that we, the vantage point that I've shown you today is looking at it through the sales and marketing angles, whether you're making marketing campaigns for yourself to find more customers, or if you're a marketing service provider or a print service provider and you're going out and offering services to your customers, this might be something you could incorporate into what you start to sell customers. Another way to differentiate your services and extend the value of the print products that you produce. So these are five key concepts. We just scratched the surface of them that you can use to begin to move your organization forward, leveraging AI that, that's uh, honestly, in the hands or the pockets of most of us here in the audience right now, you have access to all of this. So I want to know from these five, just drop me a number. Number one was intent data. Number two is personality AI. That's, you know, having that superpower to be able to know how to communicate with people. Number three, the lookalike AI, which allows you to tap into Facebook's machine learning to uh, understand who else looks like your perfect customer. The outcome driven machine learning, which allows you to you know, say, hey, I want to generate leads from this group. Facebook, figure out how to do that for me. Or number five, this predictive analysis. Which of those, if you put your thinking cap on, one, two, three, four, or five, do you think has the most potential for you in your organization? Just drop us a number there. Which one of those excites you the most? Which one of, the, which one of those do you think is the most exciting opportunity for your organization? At the end of the presentation, we're going to have plenty of time for Q&A. If you want to go further, or, you know, I geek out on this stuff, as you can tell, find me on LinkedIn. We're happy to talk to you further about these ideas um, outside of today's webinar and carry on this conversation because it is so vitally important. So with that, Stephen, I'm going to turn it back over to you, yield the floor back to you, and uh, we can uh, take the next look at AI and how it's impacting us here. Okay. Thank you very much, David. And I have one word for everybody. Wow. Uh, you can just see the unlimited opportunities that AI is presenting the community at large. And we look at it as how we can analyze it in terms of sales and marketing. It's such a fantastic tool for us. So let's not minimize this in our respective businesses in any way. We all are on Facebook. We're all doing different things online. So let's use this technology to our best advantage. Now we're going to move to the more practical side of things. Many of us are running printing companies. We're running graphics organizations, whether they're design, branding, marketing, whatever it may be. And we have a lot of constraints that we have to deal with when we produce our products. So now Udi is going to share with us some real practical insights on how AI can apply to a printing company, a graphics organization that's looking to automate their processes as much as possible, and most importantly, improve profitability. So, Udi, it's all yours. Hey, thank you, Stephen. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate David for giving us a great presentation. I did not hear it before, so David, congratulations. Give us a lot of information and great. And by the way, I'm not talking about uh, sales and marketing. But probably 80% of what David said is, oh, I agree, and not only I agree, it's applied to production as well. Everything, of course, that he says is regard to AI or artificial intelligence. So thank you, David, and thank you, Stephen. Actually, your beginning was great. So uh, oh, we're going pleasure. in the right thank direction. <laughs> 
so <clears throat> a little bit about myself. My name is Udi Ariely. Already, uh, Stephen uh, gave you introduction about me, so I'm not going to tell anything about me except one thing. Then uh, from about 1984, um, I was already developing uh, what we call intelligent software, uh, AI software, uh, rule-based software, call it different names, but it's the same thing or similar, and all for the printing industry. And the first product that I developed was print flow dynamic scheduling that we are going to hear about in a few minutes and other products. I want to emphasize not so much the EFI product. I'm from EFI. I hope you're all familiar with EFI. We'll talk about it in one second. But I want to concentrate more about why artificial intelligence is so important already what we are doing and what customers are doing and how it helps them and really creates almost miracles uh, with their production. So first of all, a little bit about uh, EFI. Um, definitely EFI is in the, on, I'm talking on the software business management and production. We're definitely on the forefront of AI, artificial intelligence technology for many, many years. As I said to you, I started already in 1984 and that uh, was the first artificial intelligence smart software in the printing industry in the world as far as I know. And uh, uh, we also, EFI is a leading, uh, a leader in print management information system, MIS, ERP as we call it, a software provider for the world. And we have uh, thousands, many, many thousands of customers all over the world. So we are very proud of it, of course. And we're working with many companies, and Canon is one of the companies that we're working with, so that's great as well. Um, uh, and we early on committed, and we for sure were one of the first to commit to develop intelligent software and invest in product development a lot of money. We did it because we understood how important it will be in the future, and, and already now, of course, important for the printing industry because all what we were trying to do in any case was to improve the efficiency, profitability, the ability to compete, uh, the ability to survive in the printing industry, in the changing world of the printing industry. For sure, when we realized how AI could help us and how smart software can help us, uh, we wanted to do it. By the way, there were many years that I'm not going to mention names and so on, uh, especially myself and the Printflow team, we were the laughing stock of many competitors and analysts and consultants in the industry, not because they are bad people or because they just didn't understand the importance, they didn't understand what we are doing. So they didn't understand that it will be a game changer in the, print industry, in the printing industry in a big way. The same that let's say digital printing is a game changer. So digital prepress was a, a huge uh, game changer in the print industry. I don't know, by the way, if any of you knows or remember a company called Cytex and Effie Arazi, who also started EFI, um, <clears throat> Uh, started Cytex that was the first to uh, digitize uh, the whole Prepress world and, and create the revolution how uh, Prepress was working. That was much before uh, Apple or anyone else uh, was trying to do it. Uh, so anyhow, EFI successfully created tools that are using AI, AI in their core within the productivity software suite. EFI has a lot of productivity software suite, like packaging and, and, and commercial and so on. And in the core of it is a lot of AI tools. And of course, there are going to be a lot more in the future, a lot of development, etc. <clears throat> a little bit about the printing industry today and already for many years, I, I do a lot of lectures in the world and I talk to a lot of customers and the printing industry has always been a storm. Today, the storm continues, only much more intense. 
So there is a lot of competition and a lot of fighting for profits, efficiencies, survival. Everyone is looking for what I call the silver bullet. We all want to know what can we do to become more profitable, to have an edge on the competition. And definitely everything that David said on the marketing side, on the uh, uh, sales side, is absolutely right. It can give you a huge edge. And I want to talk more about the edge of production and management of a printing company. So what is the secret for long-term term survival, growth, and profitability? Um, as I already said, uh, many people are competing on the dollars that are going for the printing industry. Uh, and, and that's difficult because uh, many of the dollars that used to be spent in the printing industry are now spent elsewhere, in the internet, Google, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So at the same time, we also have other problems. We have more complex jobs. All my customers are telling me our jobs are getting more and more complex, especially in the packaging world. And everyone is moving into shorter run and shorter lead time. So everyone, I remember already many years ago in my father and grandfather printing company, my grandfather started a printing company and my father and then myself, <clears throat> that customer used to come and my father said to me, when does he need the job? I'm talking now 30 years ago. I used to say yesterday. So already 30 years ago, people would come to, to our company and said, we want the job uh, tomorrow or the after, but really they wanted it yesterday. Anyhow, so uh, nothing is, is new here. But before I go into uh, uh, into the the products themselves, just for a little bit, I don't want to make it into an advertisement for EFI products, but I have to mention it because that's what we do without efficient intelligence. But there are definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. If we are talking about uh, the silver bullet, so for sure, AI is one of the bullets uh, for artificial, uh, artificial intelligence, definitely one of the bullets to solve our problems, your profitability and survival, etc. So <clears throat> definitely there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And the more that we'll see this type of products on all areas, marketing sales, but of course, in managing the companies and in production, uh, the better will be. And the way, the better that the system can make decisions for us faster and better, the better that will be. So we need software that will be intelligent and will learn over time and we can make decisions and better decisions. So let's talk about three products that EFI so we have created. Um, I quote is, and I'm going to explain it slightly more in a few minutes. I quote is the smart estimating and planning software. They change how you estimate or plan a job. I'm sure all of you, if you are, if you have a printing company of any kind, you need to do estimating, planning of the job. Uh, you have to do imposition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You need something to help you. You can't do it. The, I'd like the old days, even if you have software to do it, it probably doesn't have AI in it, it's not automated, it's not fast, doesn't make decisions for you, and it takes a long time for your estimator or planner to do every job. Now, <clears throat> Printful, that's my product that I started many years ago, together with TGO, we'll talk about it in a second. TGO is the theory of global optimization that I created together with my team at EFI. Uh, <clears throat> so PrintFlow is a dynamic, dynamic, intelligent scheduling software. We'll talk a lot about it before, uh, later, and very important for production, for profitability, for customer service, and for many other things. It really changed how you manage your production, and it changed company drastically for the better, of course. Metrics is a rule-based planning also an AI product, and in positioning software, allow you to group similar jobs together, et cetera, et cetera. We'll talk about it in a second. So 
a little bit about AI intelligent workflow. And that's supposed to be any workflow, not just EFI workflow, but any, any workflow that includes AI in it, supposed to be like this. So the idea is we want the goal is to increase and maintain high profit margin. Our options in today's marketplace, what can we do to increase and maintain higher profit? We can sell more jobs, which is not easy to do, but maybe with David's idea, it will be possible and you'll sell more jobs and you will have new customers. Sell jobs for more, that is the most difficult because normally the prices in the printing industry are going down and not up. Rarely they are going up. So to increase your profitability by increasing the price, it's very difficult to impossible. But what can you do? What can be the main uh, silver bullet for your profit and maintaining um, efficiency and your uh, long-term survival? Maximize job profit automation impact. You have to reduce touch point to improve throughput and to eliminate waste. If you can do all of it, if you can improve the throughput, eliminate waste, reduce touch points, and maybe the most important one, use less people and less time for the same throughput or the same production, you'll increase your profit. And how does AI come here? Of course, for all of this automation, and the main goal is to make lights out smart factory reality. Integrate as many business and production processes as possible into a single smart workflow. And this is a, a very revolutionary idea because in most companies, the business system and production system are totally not connected. It's not the same data. You can't analyze it. You can't optimize it, and you, and you can't make AI work on it and give you the right decisions. Only when you make it all together, when you integrate all of it, both businesses' data, like estimating and job planning and any other data that you have about your customer and how much you sold to this customer and what invoices you gave him and what type of product he did, together, with the production processes, the real production process on the shop floor, then you can make light out of factory, light out smart factory a reality. Now, we have customers and many customers, I don't want to mention names, that are doing it right now. And the results are amazing. And if they will tell you that the result of something like this is much more than they even imagined when they started. A little bit about uh, uh, intelligent scheduling and not just about print flow dynamic scheduling, but also about I quote matrix and print flow. Just a little bit more information that you will understand it better, how it's all working. So I quote, for example, it's a smart estimating and production planning. So maybe the most important part, it's intelligent estimating system. You teach it how you want your estimating, estimating to be done, you put the rules in, and because it's a smart software, it can automate processes, and it can pick up the best path for a job through your plant. You don't need anymore an employee who has so much knowledge, costs a lot of money, and also can make a lot of mistakes because the employee cannot check thousands possibilities and you cannot process thousands of pieces of information for each job. So there is a huge advantage here, not just for AI, but for AI, for computer, for all of it together, together with the data that you have to get the best answer and the best way to manufacture every job. About metrics, uh, how to create your imposition 
the best way, how to plan and impose a job. This is mainly nowadays a manual process in most companies. It's not automated at all. But with metrics, that again, we have many, many customers around the world, there's a lot of uh, uh, benefits. Uh, you can, as you can see here, there are many jobs here on the same pressure size, for example, with the same position, and some of them are a five up, or some a four up, and some a ten up, and that's what the software tells you. Again, it, you you put in the rules, you teach us how to do it, and that's how it does it, and give you automatically. Now about PrintFlow. What is PrintFlow? As I told you, the first AI product maybe in the printing industry. PrintFlow is a real-time, rule-based, automated, intelligent, dynamic scheduling tool. When I started it, uh, then in EFI, no one believed it's possible. No one. And we, it, all, it, it took a long time to convince people, and of course, until people bought it and saw how great that is and how it's changing the way that they're managing their production. And maybe again, the most important one here is automatically and intelligently schedule thousands of tasks and sequence them in, to minimizing switchover and setup. It's, it's optimize your schedule. Scheduling is visible to manage your production employees, increase profit. So that is, um, we have hundreds of customers in other world uh, using PrintFlow from the largest companies in the world to some medium size and even small one, and the results are just amazing. Anyhow, again, if it wasn't for AI, if it wasn't for smart software, we couldn't have done it. Uh, you can program PrintFlow to behave as you want it to do. You can uh, teach PrintFlow with the knowledge of your schedulers, production people, etc., and that's how it will work. PrintFlow will automate the rules that you put in and make decisions for you in real time while integrating with ERP, print MIS system, shop flow, etc. Now, PrintFlow, and I'm very proud of it, that PrintFlow was designed by us and work according to the principle of the theory of global optimization, TGO. It, it's uh, definitely the only scheduling that I know in the printing industry that is intelligent and everything I said before, but on top of it, it has a theory behind it. So just a couple of minutes uh, about the theory itself. What is TGO? The theory of global optimization. Uh, TGO is the science of leveraging smart, intelligent AI-based software to optimize workflows from acquisition to management, prep, production, delivery, and analysis. Really, your whole workflow from A to Z is optimized and automatically without anyone. But it does not replace people, like David said. Uh, maybe if you have too many uh, uh, scheduler, let's say, so you don't need as many. But it, it makes your scheduler so much smarter, they can work smarter for the company and make totally change in the way that you optimize and do scheduling. It acts according to the global view of the company, what's good for the company from a global view. It optimizes and synchronizes all area of your business. It identifies and resolving weak click and constraints. That's very important. PrintFlow will tell you all the time what, your, what, what are your weak links. And it's improving real-time communication and data sharing analysis to address real-world challenges before the negative impact your bottom line. It, I can't tell you how important it is to be proactive, to analyze the data, and know what's coming before it's coming. So integration, automation, and smart software, that's what TGO uh, support and, and, and try to teach us and teach everyone that's using, and that's how PrintFlow and other tools within AFI are working. So uh, that's really what I wanted to say. I just want... Uh, to finish and say again, we are all looking for the silver bullet. Many of us looking just an equipment, for example, buy better press, better whatever, what, better equipment. That is good and, and probably must, but it's not enough. 
That's what I say in each one of my lectures. It's not enough. What you need on top of it is a good software that will manage all your businesses uh, uh, from estimating or even order entry and even receiving the job from a customer all the way to estimating, planning, scheduling, production itself, et cetera, et cetera, until shipping, et cetera, uh, with AI, good software and modern software. If you don't do it, don't want to scare anyone and I don't want to sound not so nice maybe, but I doubt it that companies in the future, and the future is not 20 years from now, it's much sooner, will be able to compete in the marketplace without AI on all levels. And here you've got two main areas. I'm sure there are probably others, but you must have smart software, automation, and, um, uh, and all of these uh, uh, software and ideas and something like TGO, the theory of global optimization that will guide you through all of it. So thank you for listening. All right. Udi, thank you very much. We have now gotten so much information. The problem is, how do we digest it, okay? And uh, that's actually a question that's already been posed to us, is how do you assimilate AI into an operation? And uh, what I'm saying right now is, before we get into a whole bunch of questions, if you have any questions, click on the Q&A on the bottom of your screen, uh, put in a uh, question you may have. Uh, we've already gotten a bunch of questions that I want to try and address, but one of the first ones that popped out right away is, okay, David, you talked about it in the sales and marketing uh, area. Udi, you're talking about it into the production area. Where do you start? Where do you, where do you get involved in this stuff? How, you know, it, it's overwhelming when you think about it. <laughs> you know, do you have some suggestions of, how someone can start and start to learn this without being overwhelmed. David, do you want sure, to start? Could, yeah, yeah. I think that that is a fair question. It obviously can seem very overwhelming. And uh, the five key applications that we covered at the start, folks, pick one or two of those and look into them further. Uh, as an example, using personality AI to understand how to write uh, copy or to communicate better with your customers, prospects, etc is a great entry point. Um, anybody can do that. It doesn't take, uh, you know, a degree in rocket science or whatever to be able to do that. So, you know, I wouldn't try to eat the elephant by taking the bite of the whole thing. Just start with a little bite. And uh, personality AI, as an example, might be that entry point. What do you think, Udi? Uh, first of all, David, um, actually, I did not want to listen to a presentation before it. And I'm happy I didn't because it allowed me to be excited about what you are saying first time. And uh, I want to say that uh, definitely in a printing company, marketing and sales are different departments or different personality than doing people that are doing order entry, estimating production, the production, actual production on the sure. floor, data collection and so on. So first of all, I think you can start with these two at the same time and learn about it at the same time, and then you can decide what you want to do more. First, maybe it depends how much money you have, how much you can invest, etc. That's number one. Number two, in EF5 case, it depends. In the United States, uh, I don't remember the exact statistic, but we have a hu uh, very large number of printing companies that are, are uh, users or are customers. So if you are on the call and you are an EFI customer, it's a lot easier for you. Just pick up the phone to your salesperson and tell him you want to learn more about what we have to offer. They will know what software you already have, what we can replace, change, help you. And it's not just the software. It's like learning about TGO, learning about artificial intelligence, learning about automation, etc. So that's easier. Now, if you are not a customer, if you, are, you have to find. I'm not saying... As I said, I'm not doing it a commercial to EFI. None of our customers start on everything. It's always phases. No one can start on everything. Okay, so let's got a bunch of questions here, and I want to try and get uh, something going on. Uh, 
is what other applications are we seeing? I mean, I, I presented in the beginning many different opportunities, but are there any other applications that we're seeing out in the marketplace that could be low-hanging fruit for someone who wants to get into AI that uh, you're aware of? Uh, we're, we're looking at things that could be, you know, color-oriented, you know, how, how we can handle color gamuts. Can, can we, we do things? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk nature, about uh, a specific point. I understand, I understand that, for example, there are a lot of digital press manufacturers them Canon for sure, um, that have experimented a lot with uh, AI in how they manage their uh, production on the press and how they uh, uh, manage colors on the press and they do color correct and so on. So uh, for sure, a lot of companies, uh, manufacturers, hardware manufacturers, have done a lot of AI also in their equipment, and Canon for sure is one of them. All right, we we have got another question because uh, we're we're we only got a few moments left. Uh, do you guys have any good examples of companies that are currently employing AI? In, you know, printers who are actually using AI to their success formula. Yeah, so so this is Dave. Uh, obviously, we we do have some, and they range uh, from you know some of the applications like we showed you um, earlier today in, in the sales and marketing process, and uh, and up from there. And it kind of touches on the earlier question that you asked about easy entry points. Much of what we shared this morning and some of the things that our customers are doing are fairly easy entry points to start to leverage AI in marketing and sales. You just have to know that they're there. So hopefully some of what we have shared today has sparked um, those, those thoughts for you. So, yes, certainly we do, Steve, Stephen. Okay. Uh, I just want to try and ask one more question that I thought was a very interesting question. Uh, sure. What do you see as the future for robots in the printing industry? <laughs> They already exist. It's Udi. It already exists. We have quite a few customers that have robots, for example, that all the material movement within the company is done by robots. Or uh, we have companies that all the storage, because you print, then you put it in storage, and then the, the trucks are coming. When they are coming, you have to load the trucks. All of it is done by robots already today. So there was a lot of AI in that area. So I think that we'll see a lot of robots um, uh, moving the materials around, uh, loading the trucks, bring it from the different storage areas and loading the trucks. We see them loading the machine, like folding machine and collating machine. They're loading the, the signatures automatically by robots, etc. So. Definitely, we'll see more and more robots in the future. No question about it. Not just in the printing everywhere, but for sure in printing. Okay, so why don't we uh, wind this up now? I want to thank both David and Udi for an excellent presentation on uh, AI in the print world. Uh, you know, we, we've got to be open minded, okay? George Lucas, you know, in Star Wars, you know, 30 years ago, brought us two famous AI robots, which I highlighted before, C-3PO and R2-D2. But they question human decisions. They provided important answers for the Star Wars characters. And what we've got to look at today is, while that was science fiction, there is a proof of concept here that both these gentlemen have shown us. This AI is real. It is impacting the print world. And I think that any company who wants to be a viable entity has to follow the Socrates motto here. You've got to look at what's new, what's going to change. You've got to change your behavior. You've got to make decisions that are going to be positive for not only for your customers, but for your company as well. Because we live in a capitalistic society, and one must make money to survive. And as a consequence, I think AI could be a very fine opportunity for all of us to move forward. 
So once again, I want to thank Canon Solutions America for the opportunity to present this wonderful webinar, NAPCO for facilitating it, for David Rosendale and Udi Oriali for their wonderful presentation today, and we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon. Goodbye.